The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this lesson. I am Dama Charles Bobga, your biology facilitator for Lower Seed Science. Um, before we go into the lesson proper, we're going to flash back to the assignment. I hope everybody did the assignment, the assignment that I gave you last class. And the assignment was considering the breakdown of glucose into pyruvic acid and then the link reaction to acetyl CoA. How are the intermediates connected to other metabolic pathways? I already told you during the, the lesson that there is like a hop, a runabout where you can go in other, other directions so other molecules can be synthesized from there. So we're going to now go into the assignment proper. Now you see, you see that this is glycolysis. So carbohydrates, some amino acids and glycerol enter glycolysis. We're going to see that. Then some amino acids enter pyruvate oxidation. Then some amino acids enter fatty acids and some amino acids enter citric acid cycle. Then oxidative phosphorylation. So it means that we have feeder pathways, feeder entries of these molecules. So uh, remember that um, remember that our principal source of energy is carbohydrate, but we can get uh, energy from amino acids. How do we do that? How does it enter the carbohydrate mainstream? We can get energy from fats. How, how does that happen? We're going to see the various places that the feeder molecules can enter to generate the ATP. So it's very important. So we're going to see that in some details. Now look at uh, that uh, uh, a summary, uh, summary on the, on the board. Now you have proteins, proteins, proteins. Remember that proteins are part of your muscle. So the body does not normally use protein and the body does not store it. Excess proteins are taken off. But in the case where you are starving, you are not feeding, the body can go into that reservoir. That's why you see people who are starving, they are reducing in size and the bones are, are not visible because the body is not using the amino acid deposit. But there's a special procedure for the body to use amino acids. Now look at it. Now the proteins uh, are transformed into um, uh, uh, the carbon chain is first of all broken. So there is uh, the deamination, the amino group is removed and what we call the amino acid residue is the one that can be fed into the Krebs cycle. So remember that uh, proteins have this kind of formula, they have this kind of formula uh, there is an N here, and there is also, uh, sorry, there is um, an amino N, an amino N that has uh, this, there is a carbon chain, and there is also, so there is an amino N, and there is a carboxyl, and, and then a chain in the middle. So what happens is that during, for, for, for the body to use Amino acid, it must break this. This is called deamination. Deamination. 
is removed and it's from there that urea is formed by a special circle in the liver we call the onitan circle so that's very important but we're not talking about that now but we'll talk about that subsequently but now this section that has only the carbon is what we call the amino acid residue it is that amino acid residue from proteins that can be fed into the Krebs cycle so that's very important so it can be fed into the Krebs cycle then the other part goes to urea and goes right to the kidneys it is eliminated and remember that urea is very poisonous if the level of urea rises it will poison your body so that's why you need a lot of water to dilute the urea to send out now look at it polysaccharides are first converted to glucose glucose so a polysaccharide like glycogen like uh, starch that converted to glucose and the glucose in, in glycolysis it converts it to pigal 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 is the three phosphoglycerate and this is a common common compound in in photosynthesis so it means that from photosynthesis it is possible for a uh, food material to be uh, put into the respiratory chain of plants and also of animals then it's broken down to pyruvate and pyruvate goes down right to the Krebs circle through acetyl CoA or the link reaction. Now it is possible that fats are changed to uh, um, glycerol, are changed to glycerol and fatty acids. And it's possible for glycerol to be changed to pyruvate and it enters the circle. It's possible for fats to be changed to acetyl CoA, fatty acids to be changed to acetyl CoA. So you see now that. There is a mainstream reaction line, but it is possible for other substrates to fit into the circle, to fit into the circle. And from there they go to the electron transport chain where they produce the energy. So uh, what you should understand about assignment is that the body does not depend only on one food source. Carbohydrate is the main food source for energy, but it can get energy from fats, it can get energy from proteins. But proteins, to get it from proteins, the protein must first be split, deamination. The amino group separated and the carboxy residue is now fed into the Krebs cycle. But now the ammonia cannot be left in the body, so it is detoxified by the liver through the ornithine cycle. And the total carbohydrates go straight right down to pyruvate, acetyl CoA, and the Krebs cycle. And then fats is the monomers are fatty acids and glycerol, and glycerol is converted to pyruvate, there's a pathway for it, fatty acids are converted to acetyl CoA. We're going to see also that from intermediates of the Krebs cycle, succinic acid and so on, you can get from amino acids and amino acids can go back to form proteins. So it's a whole hub, it's a whole system where uh, the, the cell can derive the maximum. <laughs> But today our focus is catabolism three, the third part. So we're going deeper and deeper into the catabolic process. We've seen the first part, that was glycolysis. Now we're going to see the second part. But before we go that, we have to look at objectives, the previous knowledge that you are supposed to have acquired. We'll look at uh, real life situation, lesson activities, exercises, and then we'll talk about the summary. So you can write something down and then we'll give you an assignment. So the objective for this lesson is the Krebs cycle. Remember that in the last lesson, we are taking the glucose journey right down from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate to glucose um, uh, to fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-biphosphate, then it splits to the uh, to, to dihydroxyacetone and glycerol 3-phosphate. Then the g 3 phosphate two molecules, goes right down to two molecules of pyruvic acid. And then the determinant of the fate of pyruvic acid is the presence or the absence of oxygen. When oxygen is present, it enters the Krebs cycle in aerobic respiration. When oxygen is absent, it will go into fermentation. We're going to see fermentation, lactic acid fermentation. We're going to see alcohol fermentation. And those products have been very useful. So our focus today is the Krebs cycle. This lesson is the Krebs cycle. I expect you that you are acquainted with the breakdown of glucose already that I'm explaining, right down from glucose, from glucose to pyruvic acid and the link reaction, the acetyl-CoA. So it's very important and other related metabolic pathways. But what's the real life situation? You know, in the same scenario we had the buildings, it is possible for you to remove these bits one by one. That's a step-by-step -step breakdown. And it's possible for you to use the bits to reconstruct a different necklace. 
So it's the same scenario that happens in the cell. There is a step-by-step -step breakdown and the products are used in different ways to build other useful products that are, the body needs. So that's what happens. So we're going to come back to the relaxation to see if there is a link to it and the process of breakdown. So that is it. And our scientific stand in this lesson involves the fact that the Krebs cycle is responsible for the production of most of the energy. So that's a scientific truth that we're going to see at the end. So we saw that only two ATPs are produced and the whole system is going to produce 38 ATPs. So where are the 36 produced? We're going to see that it is in the Krebs cycle and the electron transport system. So what is the hypothesis? To make the best use, efficient use of food, material, uh, taken in by the body, the body must have a strategy to break it down step by step and it can use the components to build up new material. And the new hypothesis is that the breakdown of food must not be in a stepwise. We have seen that in the, in the lesson that we have treated. So we are agreeing that if the body has to make the best out of the food we eat, the body has a mechanism to break it down step by step and make use of the product. So this is very important. So we're going to see at the end which hypothesis we should upheld or we should reject. Now as an activity, we're going to see the stages of Krebs cycle still by the mnemonic, mnemonic strategy. Mnemonic strategy is a strategy where you use some letters or you form phrases that were able to make you remember the stages of the uh, Krebs cycle. So you have to create your mnemonic. And what is that mnemonic that I've suggested for you? This is not the only mnemonic that you should rely on. You should be able to figure out your own mnemonic that can make you remember the stages of the Krebs cycle properly. But look at this. Can I ask some super fantastic moments on? Can I ask some super fantastic moments on the Krebs cycle on? So that is, now see that I've highlighted some words. I've highlighted some words, so those are the words which will give us the stages of the cycle. So what is it? We're going to see that C can. Citrate, that's a very important compound we're going to talk about. Isocitrate, can I? Remember, isocitrate. Now look at it. There is alpha keto glutarate, very important compound. There is succinyl CoA, very important. There is succinate, there is fumarate, S. So M is malate, and O is oxaloacetic acid. Fantastic moments. Can I ask? Fantastic moments. So you see that you can create your own mnemonic, a short form, that will help you to be able to figure out the steps as you want. You are not bound to take this mnemonic. You can create your own. So that's very important. So. It is called the Krebs cycle. Why is it called Krebs cycle? See that we always write the K in capital letters. Why? Because it is somebody's name. Sir Hans Krebs. Dr. Sir Hans Krebs is the person who elucidated, who worked out, who did a work for us to know the steps of the Krebs cycle. So it bears his name, the Krebs cycle. Now it's also called the tricarboxylic acid cycle. So called tricarboxylic acid circle. We are going to see tricarboxylic acid components within the circle. It's also called the citric acid circle because the first component, the first visible compound of the Krebs cycle is citric acid. So that's why those names come. So you can call it the Krebs cycle, the tricarboxylic acid circle, or the citric acid circle. Now it is a hop. And what does hop mean? Hop means hop is like a runabout where you can take a turn to many directions. So the Krebs circle is a hop. So you can, you can, within the Krebs circle, go to other metabolic pathways. So it's linked to other metabolic pathways. Even at least all the metabolic pathways in the cell are linked to this breakdown that we are looking at, whether it's build up or synthesis. So it's a hop of a metabolic system. So it's very important. When you understand this metabolic uh, breakdown, you understand exactly how the body functions to meet its needs. It accounts for the majority of carbohydrate, fatty acids, 
an amino acid oxidation. Oxidation is a process of breakdown step by step to release energy. So when you look at this, you're going to see how all the kinds of food we eat in the morning, at breakfast, at lunch, at supper, how this food is treated by the body. It's, so, it's very important. All right, so, so that is the uh, Dr. Sehan Krebs who uh, did a lot of study. So look at the picture, it's still very young. It means that at this age of high school, you can already think about being a scientist. You can create a career. He discovered uh, 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 this work in 1937 and he received a Nobel Prize in Physiology uh, or Medicine in 1953 for this discovery. So when you do proper research, you are honored. So Sir Hans Krebs was honored for this great work that he, he, he did. Now it is important that we have an insight into this Krebs cycle and we are going to watch a little video uh, that will give you the insight. Watch the video carefully uh, because at the end uh, you'll be expected to be able to relate uh, this uh, thing, this uh, video to the step that we're going to describe. So it's a citric acid cycle. It's a citric acid cycle and it involves aerobic respiration. It involves aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration involves glycolysis, involves pyruvate oxidation, it involves the electron transport system and the citric acid cycle. So that's very important. So when these uh, things, uh, processes happen, there is the production of ATP. So we're going to see the electron transport uh, system. So the citric acid cycle occurs uh, in um, different steps. We're going to see them in this video that there are many steps involved and it takes place in the mitochondria Christian, in the mitochondria and it takes place also in the matrix. It takes place in the matrix, the Krebs cycle, and uh, the electron transfer system takes place in the in the crystal. It has eight steps. So we're going to go through eight steps one by one. In these steps, there will be ATP production, there will have carbon dioxide production, there will be production of coenzymes. I told you about coenzymes, NADH and NADPH2. And then there will be the use of the co uh, coenzymes in, in the electron transport system. So we're going to go step by step to understand how this uh, process takes place. So we're going to see in step one that there is the formation of citrate uh, by combination of acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetic acid. So oxaloacetic acid combines with citrate, five carbon, and then it forms uh, six carbon uh, citrate. So it's very important. And the citrate um, is the first visible component. That's why it is called the citric acid cycle because of the citrate. So it combines um, with, uh, it is formed from oxaloacetic acid and um, acetyl CoA. So it is very, very important. We're going to see all those edge steps systematically. So, Pyruvate dehydrogenase is the one that is, is important in the formation of acetic CoA. We already saw that in the link reaction. Acetic CoA serves as a fuel, as a fuel into the Krebs cycle. So, all that video is showing you how these compounds are formed and how they combine. Then, after citrate, you go to succinate. Succinate is another compound that is formed. So we have citrate, we have alpha ketoglutarate, we have succinate, and then we have fumarate. It goes back right to oxaloacetate. Uh, so that is very important. There are eight steps that we are going to see in this uh, in this Krebs cycle. Now let's look at um, the diagram above. The diagram that is shown on your screen. Now the step one is acetyl-CoA. Uh, acetyl-CoA formed from the link reaction combines with oxaloacetate to form a six carbon citrate. Six carbon citrate. And the six carbon citrate is very important. And the enzyme involved is um, uh, 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 citrate, the uh, citrate dehydrogenase. So there is that formation. Then it is changed to isocitrate 
And the, the enzyme involved is aconitase. Aconitase is the enzyme that will change citrate to isocitrate. Uh, so that's very important. So isocitrate uh, dehydrogenase is also involved. Isocitrate dehydrogenase is also involved. And then from isocitrate, we have the formation of uh, alpha ketoglutarate. It's also a five carbon. It's also a five carbon because there is decarboxylation. You see that carbon dioxide is removed and there's a coenzyme involved. So alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is the enzyme that is involved. Then when you leave that step four, you come to step five is the formation of succinyl CoA. So step five involves an enzyme, succinyl CoA synthetase. And succinyl CoA, there is the formation of uh, guanidine triphosphate. So it's very important. After succinyl CoA, there is the formation in step six of succinate. And succinate goes to fumarate. And the enzyme is fumarase. Fumarase. Remember that way you name enzymes according to the substrate that they catalyze. And from fumarate, it goes to malate. And malate goes back to oxaloacetate um, with the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. So uh, you look at the key, the steps, the black shows the substrate, uh, the blue shows the steps, and then the green shows the inputs, and then uh, the purple is the controlling enzyme. So the, those are the color codes that are there, and then the energy output is very important. So that is the summary of the Krebs cycle. We're going to see it again. So um, in the Krebs cycle also, uh, there are formation of um, um, coenzymes, NADH, FAD, and these coenzymes are very important to generate the energy. So you look at the, the steps here, the steps here. Now there is coenzyme NAD and there's coenzyme FAD. When one molecule of FAD moves through the electron transport system, this is it, when it moves through the electron transport system, there is formation of three ATPs. Three ATPs. Three ATPs. So we're going to see formation of three ATPs along. When one FAD goes through the electron transport system, you have formation of two ATPs. It is on that basis that we use to calculate the total amount of ATPs that are produced. Now let's look at that chain more detailing. Now, when um, these coenzymes enter the crystal, they are, uh, they are picked up by electron carriers. There is a cytochrome system. Cytochrome system. There is a cytochrome system. Cytochrome system. They carry out redox reaction. You look at the arrow there, the red is reduction and the yellow is oxidation. It means that the cytochrome system and the re receptors carry out oxido-reduction reactions. So the FAN, the flavin mononucleotide, is the first acceptor there. It is reduced when it is oxidized. When it is oxidized, it gives electrons to co coenzyme Q, and the coenzyme Q becomes coenzyme reduced. When coenzyme Q is oxidized, it passes the electrons into the cytochrome chain. Remember that from the Q, uh, uh, coenzyme Q, two hydrogens move straight. You see the arrow, move straight, but only the electrons, only the electrons move through the electron transport uh, system. So that is it. So there is oxido reduction, reduction, oxidation, and now, it is possible that free energy is released for the synthesis of ATP. So ATP is synthesized, ATP is synthesized. So the synthesis of ATP, synthesis of ATP, ATP. So energy is produced. So the greatest amount of energy is produced within the electron transport system. This is very crucial. So if the pyruvate does not enter the mitochondrion, it is useless. It's going to produce only uh, alcohol, acetic acid, and lactic acid. It's going to produce 
all those elements that still contain energy. Of course, it contain untapped energy. But when it enters the mitochondrion, the whole energy is now tapped and the body can use it. So the electrons flow at the end is crucial. At the end is crucial. The final acceptor of the electrons is oxygen. So oxygen accepts the electrons combined with protons to form water. So that's where the, the end, the waste product or the, the byproduct of respiration, you always see six molecules of water because of this last oxidation. Now the enzyme that is catalyzing that last reaction is called cytochrome, I put like that, oxidase, oxidase. Any enzyme can be inhibited. Now when you hear that some drugs paralyze or uh, inhibitors, it means that the drugs affect the cytochrome oxidase. It affects the cytochrome oxidase. So that enzyme can be inhibited by inhibitors and it can be lethal. So when there are some uh, drugs or poisons that can affect that enzyme, it interrupts energy production. So that is why there are some warring instruments, there are some warring instruments uh, that the edges of the spear have been rubbed with poison, like cura, and when you are shot with it, it paralyzes the muscle because this process is not able to take place. So it's, they have used it for warfare. So it's very, it's very, very important. So that's the electron transport system. How can we summarize it? So hydrogen carriers, and they donate energized electrons, protons, in the electron transport system, and they, they carry out oxidative phosphorylation. So oxygen acts as the final acceptor of these electrons. So how many ATPs are produced during uh, respiration and glycolysis when glucose is when glucose is uh, oxidized to two pyruvates, two ADH produced, two ATPs are produced, and the net production in oxidative phosphorylation will produce eight ATPs. You look at now the transition reaction produces six ATP. You look at the Krebs cycle, 24. So the Krebs cycle is the greatest producer of the energy. You look at now the total ATPs, they are 38. So you can follow up the analysis and then you see that the mitochondria, that's what we call it, the energy reservoir. It keeps, it can produce a lot of energy. So aerobic respiration, anaerobic or fermentation. So fermentation is enzyme catalyzed. I told you that when um, the pyruvate cannot get oxygen, it goes to anaerobic respiration. And that science of fermentation is called zymology. So it has been exploited in long term uh, by industries, uh, brasseries and other breweries exploit fermentation. Uh, also, uh, some local brute beer exploits fermentation. So we're going to look at fermentation now. And there are different types. There is homo fermentation when the products produce only one type, the process produce only one type of fermentation product. There is hetero when there is more than one product that is formed. On the basis of the end product, we distinguish three kinds of uh, fermentation. Number one is alcoholic fermentation where the end product is alcohol, alcohol. So it has been exploited, as I said, in the industry. Number two, you see that that process summarizes alcohol fermentation. You see glycolysis and you see the production of pyruvate. Pyruvate becomes decarboxylated by the enzyme uh, alcohol dehydrogenase and two acetaldehyde is produced. Then the NADH that was found producing the cytoplasm, the cytosol, now reduces the acetaldehyde to alcohol. That is how alcohol is produced in the brasseries. They use the source is glucose from or carbohydrates from corn. They use corn, they use millet, and then they produce alcohol. So they create anaerobic condition in the tanks that can generate alcohol. So that's very important. The second kind is acetic fermentation, is production of acetic acid and the acetic acid vinegar is acetic acid so that's the process by which vinegar is produced by fermentation then we have lactic acid fermentation 
This is exploited in biotechnology, in yogurt production, and other aspects of biotechnology uh, processes. So aerobic fermentation um, by uh, 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 that produces lactic acid is called lactic acid fermentation and is exploited in biotechnology food preservation. So we have a lot of, of this in food, in food preservation. So sugars are the starting products, but absence of oxygen can be, it can be tailored with enzyme to form a lactic acid. So lactic acid fermentation, glucose is broken down to pyruvate and then is reduced to lactate. So that is it. So depending on the conditions that prevail. Now, there are a lot of products that are related to fermentation. You have yogurt, beer, wine, bread, and soy sauce. All those things, they exploit the fact that uh, anaerobic respiration can take place. So back to a real life, of course, the breakdown can be helpful it's because you maximize and produce um, energy. Of course, we uphold the hypothesis that uh, to make the greatest use, we must bring make breakdown simple. Now, the assignment for the next assignment for the next class give tabulated difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration, oxidative and substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, we have good resources that you can use, and uh, and some website videos. Look at them. I will see you in our next lesson, which is lesson fifty-four. I'm going to be talking about the self cycle. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyom. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa kina bia jinki do. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam tonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen